so I made a mistake. I made a big mistake. I made the mistake of playing World of Tanks. <laughs> okay, no, I made the mistake of playing uh, this game when... In the 1 to 1B, by the way. When the 268 version 4 was still top of the tree. Yesterday for me, the 31st of May. The mistake was that... Well, you can see in the matchmaking, there's six V4s. Three on the enemy team, three on my team. And you know that they're gonna do stupid things. But this is Mountain Pass, and I've played the 1 to 1B before, which has been buffed in a recent patch. 1.0.1, actually, I think it was. So the patch we're currently still playing, although 1.0.2 is in the common test with two new tanks, blah, 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 blah. V4 nerf, yes, thank God. And some map changes, which are really needed. I'm not sure if Mountain Pass really needs a change, because it hasn't been changed when it went from standard definition to high definition. It still plays like corner fighting or corridor fighting. And this is the point where I realized that I am thoroughly fubbernucked. The FE405 doesn't have to aim, it just slams 700 damage and it proceeds to just drive. And I get ammo racked. And I think I can get one more shot off and then I die. Like, I'm pretty much a one-shot. I am a one-shot for everything on this corner. And then everyone just ignores me. So I'm thinking, oh, repair my ammo rack. Maybe I get one shot off, but it's a V4. So of course I don't get the shots off. I die. Has anyone else noticed a extreme influx of tank destroyers in the matchmaking? Because there were six tank destroyers on my team and there were six tank destroyers on the enemy team. Is there is there a thing with tank destroyers? Is that currently the best class? Is that the best class to deal with V4s? I mean, I have seen a lot of artillery still, but I have noticed more tank destroyers. Fisherman's Bay. Oh, Fisherman's Bay. Wargaming, why did you do this to Fisherman's Bay? Also, this Patton doesn't want to play Fisherman's Bay. He drives out, out into the open, past his bushes. So he knows he's going to get spotted. I don't know quite what he was thinking. Maybe he wanted to get shots off on people crossing. But even so, then he would be far too open to be safe. Anyway, I track him and he dies. Now, the side armor of this tank is 80 millimeters. That means that the VK that shot me should not have overmatched because a VK only has 128 millimeters and it doesn't have a 240 millimeter gun, so he cannot overmatch it. He cannot partially overmatch it either because it doesn't have 160 millimeters. And I was well angled for him to bounce that, so I don't even know how he penned that. I I actually think that I wasn't over angled, but he makes the mistake of driving, so he gets spotted, and the first shot I fire misses. And I just, ah, the noise speed of RNG in this game sometimes. And I'll go over that in detail in a later video, next week, Thursday. Because, oh, these, these six games that I recorded, six games, you'll see why six games. I wasn't paying attention, by the way. I was looking at my phone and then I was like, ah, oh, shit, he's out in the open. But he's well angled. So I'll just wait because reasons. And I only track him again. I don't, I don't even know how. But I'll go over that um, later and six games and you'll see later why. Oh, the fifth game was so much fun and such a fun map. <laughs> I want to die. Now, the first thing that I forgot about the 1 to 1B is that it isn't a Soviet medium tank. It looks like one, but it isn't. It has 130 millimeters of frontal hull armor, which is good. That means that you don't show your sight to 430 use. No, but it has 240 millimeters of frontal turret armor. Which means that tanks can just pen the front of my turret while I cannot pen T95 cupolas, which is always fun. But look at this. He just shoots the front of my turret. And I again bounce off his cupola. And this is the second time this has happened. In the first game on Mountain Pass, the 1 to 1 just pens the front of my Quality! See, this is where they started when I started playing World of Tanks. So this is pretty much an omen that I shouldn't play World of Tanks. I, the moment I started the World of Tanks to record these videos, the skies went dark like the blackest popo. And the thunder just came rolling in like it was nobody's business. And this shot 
Should have probably hit, but it kinda didn't. Don't know where my FPS went. Oh, there it went. Literally everything was shaking the moment that the uh, the thunder kind of did its thing. The rumbling, the... Uh, yeah. That was fun. The lightning wasn't really a problem, it was actually the thunder. That was some heavy thunder that we had that Thursday. So the good thing about the 1 to 1B is that its standard ammo has quite good penetration. So something along the lines of 270, probably 268. But the heat has 350 millimeters of penetration, which means that I, I kind of don't really have to aim anymore. I mean, sometimes I do. I cannot aim at the flat side of a mouse uh, at the tracks. I mean, I do have to hit the hull above it, otherwise it wouldn't pen, just like the well, APCR wouldn't pen. But why would I fire heat at the side of a mouse? Come on. I'm, I'm talking about the front of mouses. That is an issue. Uh, 1390, 13105, that's APCR. No, the heat is incredibly good on this tank. That's... As something we're getting buffed for some unknown reason, but a Jaeger has no problem penning the front of my hull. Which is, again, 130 millimeters, the best of any medium tank. No, never mind, I forgot Wargaming added the 430U, which has 160 millimeters. So actually, I'm thinking about it, what's the point in playing the one-to-one -one better if you have the 430 underpowered in the game? And no, the M48A5 pattern might say it has 152.8 millimeters, but that is just the front beak of the hull. The rest is something along the lines of 110 millimeters, 127, 110. And this is where the shit starts. Malinovka 3 artillery. I'm going up the hill alone because for some reason the T25 pilot PTA and the Type 61 want to go sit down south with their dicks out their pants waiting for nothing to happen. So I'm thinking I'm fine as long as I don't run into either the TVP or the Batch at 25 TAP. So I run into, you guessed it, the TVP and I have been spotted which means that is number one. Wait for it because it's not going to just be the one. That is number two. That is Pretty much all my health already gone. Two shots from the TVP, both in my lower plate, and two shots from RT, which means that from now on, I'm not going to be aggressive anymore. I'm just going to sit and snipe. And now, for some reason, for some godforsaken unknown reason, the shells fly exactly, exactly where I aimed them. Pretty much all. Look at that. Look at how well. Oh, the T10 tried to save his buddy, by the way. It didn't work out. But look how well these shots are flying exactly where I aimed them. It's mental. If it wasn't for, like, for some reason, RNG deciding, all right, this game, this game here, Malinovka, you can have it. Otherwise, all these shots would have flown over, hit the ground. I have a tiny shot on, on the engine deck or, like, the, the side of the T10. And they all just hit. And the 430, or they just hit. And then it just ends. For the same reason it started, it just ends. That first shot misses, the second shot flies through, but the third shot, the third shot for some reason, like, I aim it, and I aim it not fully, and it just flies over. Why is ROG a thing? Now, that shot that missed on the batch, it wasn't a case of life or death for my VK buddy. I mean, the Batchet was reloading and just tried to stay safe. I got spotted a few times, but luckily, Archie didn't shoot at me. So we kind of win and then lose the hill, and the Oho is the only sole survivor. Now, I want to maybe poke and shoot the artillery, but that Samoa SM over there will spot me the moment I try and do that. The Artie dies. I... I don't know how I missed that. I just had, a, like, a slight switch in my hand, so I, I, I spun to the left. And I miss it. And then I bounce off him. And I'm like, ah, I hope you don't pen me. Ah, well, I guess this is the end. Goodbye. Game number five brings us Prokhorovka.
Yeah, sure, no thing. I'll just load extra heat for you, Lumberjack. No worries, buddy. Yeah, Prokhorovka was a fun game. That was quality, where I got shot. Okay, the AMX-5120, right? He shot me because I was pulling back after shooting someone on the hill blind. And then he drove into my side. And then I, I slightly turned to the left, so, you know, he has more space to turn up towards the middle. And then he gets shot at because he got spotted. And then he shot me because it was clearly my fault that he got spotted over there. Out in the open. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> oh, this is a great omen for uh, this game. And... The 268 version 4 just literally pressed his W key, rammed like two tanks to death, driving down the hill. And it just, and from that point onwards, it was just like a lost game from both sides. It was great. I had fun in Prokhorovka. That game, oh, that game. That game made me lose my shit. And I was like, I don't want to play World of Tanks anymore. As long as, like, the 268 version 4 exists. And now the Super Conqueror is top of the tree. And that's also an overpowered tank. So I'll probably come back to World of Tanks in, like, two months. And see what the top of the tree then brings. Because, uh, the V4 should not have been added. Anyway, we win that fight. And I'm still firing nothing but heat. And heat into the side of a T44. Yeah, sure. I mean, I don't really care about credits anymore. I have 15 million, one five, not five zero. That would be fantastic. 15 million credits from playing Frontline and getting to the first prestige. And speaking of which, I have not played Frontline since I reached first prestige. And I cannot play Frontline anymore because it is June! And it would end on the 1st of June, didn't it? Something like that. I'm not quite sure when it would end. But, I mean, I don't, I don't play Frontline. I haven't played Frontline. And I don't care about credits anymore. There's very few tanks currently in the game that I'm grinding towards. I mean, I have to buy the Object 277 when that comes out, obviously. And if it turns out to be a good tank, because Wargaming didn't nerf it, they just rearranged the insides of it, the Amorak and stuff, I will probably end up selling the T10. So I'll get, what is it, 3 million credits back after spending 6? So that's fine. Or I can wait until there's a tier 10 discount, because I'm not going to buy the 277 straight away, probably. Because... It's not like I'm playing real the tanks. Anyway, we killed the IS-6 who has been firing high explosive the entire game. My team is capping, and I know that I will not end up fighting a Jaeger in a 705 for the entirety, so I'll just drive. And actually, 705 comes back, so one more shot of damage, and that is where this game ends. Thank you, Wargaming. Thank you for letting me spend more money. Okay, maybe I was wrong. I was shooting the Chrysler, and then I run into the 5120, so I know, give him space by backing off to the left. We both get spotted. He takes a shot, and decides that it is my fault, so I get to take the shot from him. So thank you, Bazzini. I don't know what I expected.